Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today, as it's Valentine's Day, I thought I would talk about why I love classics. So this is the For the Love of Classics book tag. I have linked the original down below. It has been done by tons of lovely booktubers who I love and adore. So I thought I would add my own thoughts into the mix. So firstly, why do you read classics and how often do you read classics? I read classics to gain new historical perspectives, to play with language and to watch how language has evolved, but also I read them to see how human nature hasn't changed over the centuries. And I read at least one classic per month, although recently I have been reading more than one classic per month, thanks to the wonderful suggestions that I have been getting from all of you. Question number two is, what is a period or country or culture that you have not read many classics from? I really have tons of classics to, that I could explore. I haven't read many Italian classics or many German classics. I haven't read any Indian classics, I realized recently, uh, or any other sort of Asian classic for that matter. Number three was a really difficult question, which is which book do you think will be a classic in 100 years time? And I honestly do not know which books are going to be classics in 100 years time, simply because I don't really have my finger on the pulse of what is being widely read and studied and talked about. I don't tend to read what is popular. I tend to read what is popular within a group of like-minded people, like myself, but I don't know that that will necessarily survive of its own merit. I might be rambling, but in any case, I have no idea, but I'm intrigued to find out. The next question is, what is the last classic that you read? And I have two answers because I am currently reading Villette, and that is my main classic for February. But if we're saying the last one that I finished, that would be A Passage to India by E.M. Forster. The next question asks, what is the first classic that you read? I mean, I was familiar with a lot of classics because of the television program Wishbone, so I started loving classics in that way from about the age of five. And in fact, if you saw uh, my children's bookshelf tours, that I read and owned a lot of the adapted classics from that range. But my first time reading full-blown cla adult classics in their original form was probably when I watched the 1993 film of Much Ado About Nothing when I was 12. And I also started with P.G. Woodhouse around that same time. Uh, my parents and I started watching the Jeeves and Worcester television series together. And so that spring, when we went on a road trip to Florida, my mother brought a compendium which I have searched this house for and I cannot find right now, but it was called The Inimitable Jeeves. And so we read some of the stories out loud together on that road trip. And shortly thereafter, I started reading Sense and Sensibility and Pride and Prejudice when I was 13. Question six asks, what is your favorite classic book cover? And I own so many beautiful editions, I'm very lucky, but I think my favorite is my cloth-bound edition of War and Peace, which is covered in comets. That is just so beautiful to me because that is my favorite scene in War and Peace. There's a wonderful quiet moment where a ton of drama has just gone down among Pierre and all of his friends. And he has had a huge and profound realization and he stumbles back out to his sleigh and he looks up and the great comet of 1812 is passing overhead. And to everyone else, this was a symbol of impending doom almost. 
but Pierre finds a great moment of peace and joy and self-revelation in that wonderful quiet moment and that forms the ending of the musical Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 which is also one of my favorites so I love that they chose the comet motif for the cloth bound edition question number seven is classic authors that you wish had written more books I have to go with a cliche here and say Jane Austen I wish that she had lived longer to write more novels. But then again, I get incredible pleasure out of rereading the books that she was able to publish. My least favorite classic, however, is a very easy question, and that has to be Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I hated it when I read it in AP Literature my senior year of high school, and then I had to read it again the next year for my Romanticism to Modernism course in university. Oh, that was awful. Question nine asks for your favorite translated classics. I have to say I have enjoyed anything by Tolstoy that I have read so far, and I hope to read much more. But some of my other favorites that I have read recently were Eugene Onegin by Alexander Pushkin, La Dame aux Camélia by Alexandre Dumas-Fils, and Les Liaisons Dangereux by Pierre Chaudelot de Laclos. The next question asked for your favorite modern classic, so one that was published after 1900. And I have to say I don't have very many. In looking through my shelves, I realized exactly how many of them fall between the 15 and 1800s. But I was able to find a couple, which were the Anne of Green Gables series by L. M. Montgomery and A Passage to India and indeed A Room with a View by E. M. Forster. Question 11 are classic literary places that you would like to visit. I would love to see Moscow one day. I would love to see Paris one day, although with my dairy allergy, I'm afraid that I wouldn't be able to eat in Paris. <laughs> Between the dairy and the nuts, I don't know that I would do very well. Um, but I would also love to continue traveling around the UK. I would love to visit Hayworth, and I know uh, Connor Stampanato has a vlog up, and it's in my watch later list at the moment where he went around Hayworth. I would love to revisit a lot of the Austin sites like Chawton and Winchester. Bath is my second home, so of course I'd love to go back. And I'd love to actually see a play at the Globe. I've walked past the Globe on a number of occasions, but I've never seen a production there. So those are, those are some goals, and I'm sure I will develop many, many more as I continue reading. Question 12 is the first classic that you would recommend to a child. And I have to say it really depends on the child which one I would recommend. It depends on their reading level, it depends on their personal interests, but by and large I would say that classic fairy tales and folk tales are an excellent place to start. Uh, Winnie the Pooh and Paddington are classics for a reason that can be read and enjoyed by anyone, in my opinion. Maybe from there I would recommend the um, adventure stories like Robin Hood or Treasure Island, uh, maybe The Secret Garden or Anne of Green Gables. There are many, many more that could be read at a high elementary or, or middle grade age range. 13. Classics that you think are mistitled, and what would you rename them? I don't know that I would rename any. I think they all work in their own particular way. I do kind of love that Anna Karenina isn't exactly the main character of Anna Karenina, but I don't know that I would change it. I kind of love that it completely subverts the reader's expectations. And lastly, what is your favorite classic that you would recommend to everyone? I mean, any of the ones that I have mentioned so far, particularly Austen, 
as she holds a special place, and indeed Shakespeare. But in addition, Far From the Madden Crowd has been calling to me for a reread recently, so that may be creeping into my favorites as well. And lastly, who do you tag? And yes, I'm going to give the classic cop-out of anyone who would like to do this tag who has not already done so, because that is my sticking point. I cannot remember which of you haven't done this tag yet. So leave me a link down below if you choose to also do this tag. I would love to see your videos. Let me know your answers to any of these questions if you do not have a channel but would like to answer some of them anyway. And let's compare favorite classics or ones that I could read to expand my repertoire. Until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.